This is a USB PD cable. I'm actually surprised I haven't seen more people talk about this because once you understand what this is, why you'll need it, I think you might wanna go grab a few, especially if you're trying to power any kind of camera or power hungry device. These days, we've all gotten really used to the USB-C connector. These are almost on every electronic device imaginable, but USB-C is not all created equal. This cable is special because it actually supplies more voltage than traditional USB would offer. So you can charge things like laptops, cameras, tablets, gaming devices, and other power hungry electronics. I found this cable after a friendly commenter let me know that USB PD was a thing. I hadn't even heard about it before, and yet I'm so glad I actually know about it now because it solves a big problem I was having. You see, with the Lumix G9 Mark II, this camera here, I'm used to charging the camera from the side port here off the USB-C that charges the internal battery, but I was running into an issue where the battery wasn't staying fully charged. And apparently it's because this port wants USB PD and I wasn't giving it. I'm a big fan of these Anton Bauer Titan bases, but they are getting a little bit old now. And the USB port on here is not rated for USB PD, but there are three DTAP ports and these DTAP ports are 15 volt. With this type of cable, I can take that DTAP, convert it to nine volt, which is what the camera wants, and send it in USB-C, and now the camera can stay powered all day long. The original USB cable I was using wasn't enough. It wasn't giving enough power. This is basically not enough with the typical USB port here. That used to work for some older cameras, and when I say it worked, it kind of worked, but it also had some problems as well. It wasn't even enough back then. So with these USB PD cables, you can get a lot more charge to your camera or device, whatever it might be. This box on the cord is quite annoying, but you really want to make sure that it's there. They do make DTAP to just USB-C, but that can be quite dangerous because DTAP is 15 volt and that's gonna send 15 volts straight into the device that you're connecting. And a lot of devices aren't rated for that. You might have one that is, which in that case it's fine. So for a safer, more power managed cable, I went with this one made by Condor Blue. It's meant for cameras like the R5C, the Lumix cameras like the S5 II, the G9 Mark II, and a few other photo video hybrid cameras. So for this configuration, I just mount the D-tap to the side here, that plugs straight in. A little blue light shows that it's getting power. I can run this over the top of the camera and plug it in the side here, USB-C. The red light comes on, letting me know that it's charging this battery. And even with the camera on, it'll keep that battery charged much better than what I was trying to do before with that regular USB cable. This just wasn't cutting it. I like this setup because that internal battery is basically gonna save the camera from ever losing power instantaneously. If this ever gets unplugged, you can see that there's still an internal battery keeping everything charged and going, so I don't have to worry about a critical power failure or any kind of corrupted clips. But one thing that is annoying about this setup, previously with USB, it went straight off the side, but you can see these DTAP ports, they have a certain orientation. So this one, when I plug in, the cable goes up, but any other DTAP cables, because of the way these ports are built in here, they end up having to go down. And by down, I mean underneath the camera. If you try and set this down, you end up setting it on the cord and that's really irritating. So I'm actually working on a solution to kind of reroute the configuration of these ports to make sure that all the wires are going up towards the camera, away from the base, so I can actually set the thing down. These are all the little minor gripes you end up figuring out and working through as you start building things and their optimal configuration. Okay, I've taken up this extra DTAP port with a USB PD cable where previously I was using USB and that means I need to move my monitor cable to a different spot and now that creates a whole new set of problems but I actually kind of enjoy figuring all this stuff out and working through the mess. So if you haven't heard about USB PD yet, definitely check it out. I imagine a lot more batteries, a lot more devices are going to be requiring this standard and you don't wanna buy the wrong thing for the right equipment. It's something I certainly hadn't heard about because after all, it's not a huge selling point, although it is valuable. It's not a main tentpole marketing 
thing, USB PD, but I imagine you'll want to be aware of this technology as you can incorporate it into your setup, whatever that might be.